Our next question is part F. It sends us back onto the complex plane. It says, the points P and Q represent the complex numbers uh, Z1, which is equal to four plus I, and Z2, which is equal to one plus four I, respectively, on an argand diagram. The point R represents Z1 plus Z2. So show that the area of the quadrilateral OPQR that, oopsie daisy, that area of that quadrilateral is going to be 15 square units. Okay, so this is a proof question, right? I've already been told what the answer is ahead of time. So how do I work out what this is going to be equal to, but actually the reasons for it, because it says show that, and that's why you can see three marks are attached to this. All right, to begin, um, when we have a go at this question, clearly the geometry of this is going to be better to understand uh, and easier to reason through if I've got a clear sense of that uh, on my own diagram. So um, just to make it a bit nicer for you guys, uh, I'm just going to um, try and make this as close to scale as possible. Uh, let's draw ourselves a, a nice, neat uh, complex plane here. Um, so um, what we're going to get here, let's write, draw something like this like so, and like this. Okay, here we go on the real axis and the imaginary. I know some people don't like it, but I've always been taught to put arrows on both sides and there's our origin over there on the left hand side. And what did I say this was? This is question F. Okay, now the particular points that have been handed to us are um, P, which is at four plus I. So I'm gonna go over, if we say, just looking at the scale here, um, I'm gonna go and mark in, gonna go one, two, three, four. So that's going to place point P about there. This is one plus, oopsie daisy, it's gonna be four plus I. Um, there's point P, point Q is uh, 1 plus 4i, so therefore if I do the same kind of 1, 2, 3, 4, but use those points, um, or those lines rather, that's going to be lining me up about there, so I'm going to call that Q, which is equal to, what do we just say, 1 plus 4i. Alright, so I've got P, I've got Q, R is the sum of those, right? So what I can do is I can say, being especially that I'm headed towards a quadrilateral, right? Um, I'm going to put this in, let's keep, let's stay with black. I'm going to imagine this as the, uh, oopsie daisy, I'll do it from down here, the sort of concatenation of these two vectors, right? OQ and OP, if you do them one after the other, you get P plus Q, right? So therefore, I'm going to take this, grab it over here, and that point that I've ended on up there, that should be R, which you can see is obviously going to be 5 plus 5I. Um, and just for good measure, let's get that uh, whole parallelogram in there. Okay, so I want to show that this area, uh, that'll lock in appropriately, I think that'll do. We want to show that this area is going to be 15 square units, all right? Uh, a bunch of different ways to do this, right? Um, I'm going to show you actually three methods for working out the area, and they each have their own attraction. Uh, I'll start with the most uh, efficient one, I'd say, because people like the quick answer. Um, but then I'm also going to show you some other methods that are, you know, they're sophisticated. They use a little more advanced geometry, not much advanced, some of them, um, and they give you the answer just or almost as efficiently. It's just you have to think of the advanced way. Okay. So when I have a look at this diagram, um, I notice that um, I don't just have a parallelogram, I also actually have a rhombus, right? Do you see that? Because I've got, oh, I'll mark it in like so, because I've got this side being equal to this side, and of course I have these two just being, you know, translated versions of those two vectors, right? Um, you've got a rhombus here, and so one of the ways to work out the area of a rhombus is half times the product of the diagonals half the product of the diagonals because the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. If I draw them in like so, um, I'm just going to, I'll grab this and I'll, I'll grab a copy of this and put it somewhere else because I, I said I was going to show you new solutions, other solutions later. So let's just leave that as a nice clean diagram. Um, if I look at the, di the diagonals like so, so if I draw this one here and this one here, um, because I have a, a, a pretty decent diagram, you can see that that's pretty close to a right angle there, right? But the key thing is it allows you to do, um, you know, base times height, uh, sorry, half base times height, half base times height, half base times height, etc. And when you combine all of those, you're just getting, um, uh, you know, all of those triangles all together and that gives you half the product of those diagonals, right? okay? 
So therefore, if I say, oh, okay, well, what are those diagonals? Um, when you think about um, this longer diagonal here, it's going to be um, the distance of, or the modulus rather, of Z1 plus Z2. So I can just work that out with Pythagoras. Uh, and then this one here, because um, I've got um, P and Q, there's gonna be a difference here, right? So I can just do the modulus of, um, if I call this, right, Z1 um, take away Z2. That's gonna give me that distance across there, okay? Uh, in fact, why don't we just work that out while we're at it. This distance across here, um, you can see if I go from, um, uh, what's the best way to think about this? Uh, I'm gonna think about it as um, three uh, minus three I because you can see I'm going from Q um, to the right three units and then down three units and that's gonna take me over to P, right? I mean, I could have gone in the opposite direction but because I'm working out magnitude, the sign doesn't matter, okay? So here, um, if I work out first, um, OR, uh, yeah, I'll put the work in here. OR uh, is going to be, or its magnitude, I should say, is gonna be the square root of um, five squared plus five squared. This is just Pythagoras, right? Five squared plus five squared, which you can see I'm getting from here. So that's gonna be uh, 25 plus 25 underneath the square root. So this is five root two, because I can take out the 25, uh, or the square root of 25 factor, I should say, five root two. Um, and then when I'm working out that magnitude of PQ, um, that's going to be the square root of three squared plus three squared, like so. Um, because you can see I'm getting the threes from here, right? I mean, that really should be three squared plus negative three all squared, but you get the idea, okay? So again, same deal. I can pull out that square um, root of nine, um, and then that leaves me with a two, okay? So I can say now, since, um, O, P, Q, R is a rhombus. They already told me it was a parallelogram. Um, and now I'm reasoning that it's a rhombus because um, O, P equals O, Q. The area um, of O, P, Q, R, I can appeal to the area formula for a rhombus, which is going to be half times the diagonals, which we just worked out were five root two, and three root two. So you're gonna get um, a half times 15 from the five times three and two from the root two times root two. And that gives you the 15 units squared as required. So like I said, I think that was a pretty efficient way to go about it. Um, and a handful of you did get this solution, but it wasn't the only way. So let's call this one method one and uh, let's have a go at a secondary method. Uh, yeah, I'll just do it all the way on this page. That's fine, no need to move it. Method two. Some fairly simple, um, you know, right angled triangle, or not right angled triangle, some fairly simple trigonometry is gonna allow you to not just treat this as a, a parallelogram, but also as a pair of triangles that you can work out the area of, of each of them very easily because there's this congruence. So you only need to do it once in fact, right? What I'm gonna do here is think about this parallelogram as um, just, you know, if you think back to this diagonal here, um, if I take, let's highlight it, so let's go like so. That's too fat, but I can adjust it. There we go. Uh, close enough, and let's get that style right. That'll do me. Uh, no, you know what, I'm picky. Let's make that the right shade of blue. There we go, that's better. If you have a look at that triangle there, um, clearly um, with uh, the fact that this is going to be a parallelogram, you have congruence, right? Even if it wasn't a rhombus, um, you would still have congruence between these two triangles. So if I can work out the area of this triangle, I just have to double it and then I'm good to go, right? Now there's lots of ways to work out the area of this triangle, but a nice way to think about it um, is to take advantage of um, what we know in terms of vectors, right? Because I can work out, for instance, um, this angle in here, let's call that theta. I can work out the angle between these two vectors using the dot product. And you might say, oh, that's really overpowered, but it's kind of a nice thing to use because I, I have um, this side and this side are trivially easy to calculate. Once you've got that angle in there, you just go half AB sine C. It's even nicer than half AB sine C because you're gonna double it. So you just get AB sine C for this A, this B, and this particular C for theta, okay? So you've got the rough roadmap of it. Uh, let's have a go at like, what does the working look like, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna consider, um, rather than calling this four plus i, I'm gonna go into sort of vector mode. So I would call this four i plus j. And for q, I would call this correspondingly i plus four j, right? So when you're working out the dot product, you're just comparing the, the i's and the j's and multiplying through appropriately. So how am I gonna write this out? Well, I would say, 
um, by the definition of the dot product that uh, OQ, if I take the dot product of that with OP, what's that going to be equal to? It's the two magnitudes, OQ, OP, multiplied by cos of the angle in between, which I'm just calling theta, um, but it is, I guess, POQ, right? So I'm just gonna label that as, actually no, I'll put that as POQ here because everything in this line is in terms of P's and O's and Q's, okay? So now, uh, let's go ahead and, and work out what the dot product is. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you're gonna get four times one, and then one times four. You can see me comparing um, this I, these I components and then these uh, J components, right? So it's all nice and straightforward. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see, I'm just gonna do um, Pythagoras twice, right? And it's gonna be the square root of one squared plus four squared, which is 17. And these two happen to be equal, so that's really nice. Um, and then I just said, oh, let's call that theta just for convenience, right? So therefore, what am I getting? Um, if I make cos theta the subject, on the left-hand side here, I had eight. So that's gonna be eight there. On the right-hand side, um, I had this 17 here, which I'm gonna divide through to make cos theta the subject. So you just get eight on 17. And you might think, half of you are thinking those are terrible looking numbers and the other half of you are thinking those are awesome numbers because you recognize that these are actually part of an integer um, set of um, Pythagorean triplets, right? Um, the 8, 15, 17 triangle to be more precise. So if you have a think about a very quick and dirty right angled triangle here, um, if you've got some theta and um, I'm, I'm talking about cos, right? So that's adjacent on hypotenuse. That tells you that the last side is going to be 15, that shorter side there, right? 8, 15, 17, go ahead and check it out, right? 64, 225, add them and you get 289. You're like, how did you know 17 squared was 289? Well, when you spend a lot of time squaring numbers, you'll get that, right? So therefore, if that's what cos theta is, therefore sine theta is going to be just 15 on 17. And that should look very suspicious, that appearance of that 15, because it's going to cancel with the 17 on the bottom. Do you see where this is going? Uh, I'm going to say that area OPRQ, it's double the area of this blue triangle that I've just worked out here, which is OPQ. So let's call that triangle OPQ, which is two times, here comes just the area formula, right? It's half A B sine c, which in this case is sine theta. I already know what that is, so I'm getting um, the two times a half, they're just gonna cancel. I'm gonna get 17 times 15 on 17, which is the 15 square units that I was looking for in the first place. Okay, so that was a, a second method. Now, oh, I was a bit silly. I, I did this neatly before, but I forgot. So let's just grab this again. It's a bit messy. I'll have to delete some stuff. Let's have a look at one more. Um, it's, it's slightly hilarious in terms of being overpowered, but it's, it's a great use of the technique, which I really enjoyed seeing when um, I saw a student do it. So let's just get rid of all that. Oh, just call that P and Q and uh, I don't need this anymore. Um, we use the dot product just now, right? So that's a pretty sophisticated technique when you think about the fact that I'm just in like, you know, TD vectors, right? But um, if you wanna think about uh, an even funnier, more sophisticated, but once you see a very clever way of doing this, uh, I'm not gonna use the dot product to work out that angle. I'm gonna do, get ready for it, a projection, right? Um, I'm gonna do a, a scalar projection, in fact, just to work out a particular length here that's gonna help me evaluate this area. Let's go back to the fact that this is a parallelogram, right? Um, in my first method, I took advantage of the fact that this particular parallelogram is a rhombus as well. So I used the area formula for a rhombus. But if you didn't know that, or if you didn't think your mind didn't go there, you might think, well, what's the area of a parallelogram if I don't like, you know, slice it up into chunks like triangles, right? And it just so happens, you may recall this, right? That if you think about a parallelogram, any arbitrary parallelogram is really just like a rectangle that's had um, a bit sliced off it and, and moved over, right? So if you think about uh, this bit over here, it's congruent to this chunk over here. So if you just moved it over, you would get a rectangle from that parallelogram that number one, it has the same perpendicular height, like so, and number two, it has the same uh, sort of base length, I guess you would call it, right? So we know that the area of a rectangle is um, base times height. So therefore the area of that parallelogram is the perpendicular height times the base. So if you can work out what that is, you're good to go, right? Now, in order to do that for this um, particular parallelogram, the perpendicular height, I can work out with the help of a projection, right? So let me see if I can get this right. Um, 
if I think about the fact that, say, uh, you know, uh, looking at, let's, let's highlight it like so, looking at this vector here, I'm going to call this OQ, right? And if I think about the projection of OQ onto OP, so what I'm imagining is I'm sort of dropping down this perpendicular, and this is the perpendicular height that I want, so I'm just going to call this H. If that's perpendicular there, right, the projection onto it is going to be here. Right? Now the projection is not the thing that I want. The projection though, with the aid of Pythagoras, will help me work out this perpendicular height. And once I've got that, I already know that this is going to be the square root of 17, or if I was doing this method from scratch, like it's not hard to work out that it's square root of 17. So then here is my base, multiply by my height, and I'm good to go. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to use this right here, I'll keep this in purple. This thing is the projection of um, OQ, the blue, onto OP, that black one down the bottom. So I'm going to write that as projection of, um, it's onto OP and it's of OQ. Okay, are you following? So um, there's lots of different wor ways to work out what a projection is, um, but in this context I think doing OP dot OQ uh, and then dividing by the magnitude of OP is probably going to be one of the more convenient formulas that I use for this projection, okay? Now, I'm going to cheat just a little bit because we've already worked out some of this before, but you can work this out from scratch if you wanted. Um, I already know this dot product. It's, um, do you remember, this is 4 times 1 plus 1 times 4, so you're just going to get 8 on that numerator there. And by the same token, I've already worked out this length OP a number of times. It's the square root of 17. So I'm just going to pop that on the bottom there. So once you've got that, okay, how do I use that in this right angled triangle? What, what I can say is, and let's just grab this just to make it a little easier to see what triangle I am talking about. Um, that is a bit sneaky and cheap, but I'm going to ride with it, okay? Um, what I can say here is that um, in that triangle, I can say that this shorter side um, plus um, this other shorter side, so I'm taking the scalar, um, actually I don't really need to say that because this, this should have this around it, like so. Um, the scalar projection, like so, is going to be that other shorter length, and what that's going to be equal to is um, the hypotenuse all squared, like so, okay? Um, so you can see, in fact, I should have that in blue because that's what that, um, that's what I marked it in, like so, okay? So um, that h squared, uh, I'm going to leave that as the subject, and on the right hand side, I already know what oq is, it's the square root of 17, so when you square it, you get 17, uh, and then I'm going to subtract this particular um, projection in here. I should have said, by the way, that's squared, that's very sneaky because this is Pythagoras after all. So therefore, um, this result here is being squared, so it's 64 on 17. I hope you can see that numerator and denominator being separately squared. So therefore, what am I getting? I've got h squared equals, now this is 289 on um, 17, because I'm just squaring that, right? So when you subtract 64, does this sound familiar? It's Pythagoras all over again. Um, this is going to give me 225 on um, 17, so therefore, the height is going to be 15 on the square root of 17, since of course, um, it's positive. So therefore, finally, um, since OPQR is a parallelogram as given in the question. The area is just base times height. Um, so area equals, all right, the base is um, just going to be, well, I'll write base times height just to make it clear what I'm multiplying. So this is going to be um, that magnitude of OP, which we already know, multiplied by h, that's the base and that's the height that I'm looking at in this particular case. Um, are you sick of me yet writing the square root of 17 <laughs> multiplied by 15 on the square root of 17? So that's why you get one last time the 15 square units as required. And one of the things I love about this is that to get that 15, everything always cancels, right? Um, these awkward irrational numbers cancel here. When you have a look at our previous method, um, they weren't irrational, but they were just weird looking that they appeared there on the denominator. Um, and then here, it's the it's the it's those irrationals and that half that cancel. So it's just a perfect example of the, the beautiful sort of symmetry that you get from considering geometric situations from multiple angles.